Oh, I just wanted to hear him say the whole thing. Uh, it's the Lord's Prayer. I mean, it's right. <laughs> I spilled the tiny cup uh, all over me. Yep. He said the fourth philosophy. Do you, what does that mean? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Grafted. We are back. Season two, episode seven. So grab your coffee, whatever size mug you have, you prefer. And, you know, of course, Yeshua didn't go to coffee shops to get his coffee, because mm -hmm. there were no coffee shops. Mm -hmm. He would just, he brews them at home. He brews it. Oh, we gotta, we gotta go. <laughs> I don't know why the grain thing bothers you so much. Jesus didn't mind. The Pharisees did mind. And then report him now. Jesus knows how to handle himself. You don't have to write to his rescue all the time. Seriously? You? The master of riding to his rescue. <laughs> I did that a few times. I know it doesn't help. You know what they're doing to John. We can't let them do that. We Jesus. won't. Then mm. let's not make a scene everywhere we go. That's all I'm saying. Mm. It's common sense. I think he's more... I see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Andrew's like concerned they're going to take yeah. Yeshua. And so... John's in custody. John's right. in prison right So now. he's getting like nervous. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, that's... Wow, I never really thought about that they might be starting to get nervous about that. That's that really either. human. I love that. I know. I've never had that thought, I don't think. Right. Side note, too, is that this boat uh, is about the size of the boat that they've they actually uh, found in the, the Sea of Galilee at Gennesar. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's about that size. Really? So, I, I mean, I'm not like a boat expert, but I have <laughs> seen the boat that they, the, you know, the Sea of Galilee dipped down, was real low one year, and mm. they found this first century, they call it the Jesus boat. Really? Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it's about this size. So that that's a pretty pretty good display. Nice. It's, they're, they're doing such a good job. That's awesome. That I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. You, you always wonder, like, because there's, just, there's so many context to on yeah. a boat or on the sea like whether she was sleeping on the boat like how big was the boat where was he right. sleeping you know so it's like having this picture in your head the next time you read mm -hmm. the text it's helpful right it's super helpful and you could see why if a storm came in and you're in a boat that small <laughs> right yeah you would be concerned it's not some yeah. like big ship or something yeah. or commercial yeah. fisherman or something i'm a i'm a landlocked land lover <laughs> you're kansas and uh, kansas <laughs> Being on a boat like that, right. on any water, mm -hmm. might make me a little nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we know how to swim, okay, but... <laughs> Dog paddle. <laughs> I'm common sense guy. Get used to different, brother. I'm Get being smart. What? You're smarter than Matthew and Thomas. So Matthew's smart now. The Messiah really has come. <laughs> That was awesome! Don't forget I said anything. Let's just fish. The side of really has nice come. Wow, that's my favorite. That's so good. I'm here to request an audience with the Praetor. It's urgent. That's what everyone says. <laughs> there are signs all over Capernaum saying the man known as Jesus of Nazareth is sought for questioning. I can take your statement. I believe he was last seen in Jerusalem for one of our pilgrimage festivals. When was this? Five days ago. That's outdated intelligence. What? We'll have him in our custody by tomorrow. Wow. What's happened? Arrested on what Is charge? Is there anything else you'd like to report? With all respect, officer. I, I mean, this is horrific. Mm. Like... It doesn't really matter how much you don't like someone, yeah. but for right. Jewish mm -hmm. leaders or any Jews for that matter to betray another Jew, I mean, this is yeah, that's that's this deep. is super bad, super low mm -hmm. uh, to the Romans. Right. You know, there's this understood thing. Hey. We may not get along, but we don't betray each other. You don't go to the Romans. To the Romans. Right. So right. anyway, I don't know. That's This is really awful. Oof. Yeah, it's heavy. We must know the nature of the charges. If he broke Jewish law, then we must know. We... What do you know of the order of the zealots? The fourth philosophy? I don't understand. Stories and rumors. 
There are outsiders. What have the zealots got to do with Jesus of Nazareth? Thank you for coming in. Can you see yourselves out, or would you like me to no, show you? No, no, you're on the wrong track. Jesus is dangerous, but he's not a We zealot. can decide for ourselves who's hmm. dangerous. Thank you. May we question him? Once you have him in custody? Yes, I would very much like to speak with him on behalf of the Capernaum Synagogue. We'll pass that along. Will you really? No. Out. <laughs> Mark my words. Do not underestimate him. Do not underestimate this. Hmm. So that was interesting there. Rome, of course, is mainly concerned with the zealots, right? Because right. they don't want the zealots to rise up. Mm -hmm. Violent and, uprising, right? right? Yeah, that's the whole reason the mm -hmm. Roman soldiers are there, mm -hmm. is to keep the Pax Romana, the mm -hmm. peace of Rome, right? So, that's that's all they care about in that sense, right? But I think it's uh, yeah, interesting how they flipped and it's like, oh well, he's not a zealot, mm -hmm. uh, and yet he is he is a, a zealot mm -hmm. in in a different sense, right? Right, so Al almost defining it in a yeah, biblical sense, right? Mm -hmm. Like, zeal for your house consumes me, right? right. And we see that in scripture for sure. I'm sure they're going to get to more of the yeah. zeal as we get to know uh, Jesus more mm -hmm. in the story here, which I'm actually looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. It is interesting to see these these two uh, power groups kind of mm -hmm. wrestling a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're concerned about one thing. The Jewish leaders are concerned about one thing. Rome is concerned about one thing. And... Yeah, they're they're different but the same, you know. Yeah, they're both concerned about their own authority. It, yeah, yeah. And maintaining control mm -hmm. and their position yep. and their power. Right. These are power plays. Right. So they said something uh, when they asked about the zealots. He said the fourth philosophy. Do you? What does that mean? He just means the zealots. Okay. So you have. Uh, well, the main groups, at least, in the first century are the Pharisees, you have the Sadducees, you have the Essenes, and then you have the Zealots. Okay, so they're basically so, saying there's these four main philosophies, right. and the Zealots is the fourth one. Right, they're talking, they're just, that's what Josephus writes about, first century Jewish historian, so right. they're, they're referencing that. There's, it's actually more diverse than just that. You have the Herodians, mm -hmm. who, you know, are after Herod, you know, connected with Herod, mm -hmm. you have a, a lot of Jewish people from Babylon that come mm -hmm. in for the different feasts. You have Hellenistic Jews right. that are influenced by Greek philosophy mm -hmm. and just the the Greek Empire because Alexander the Great yeah. had ruled just a couple hundred years before and influenced the known sure. world. You see them in the Book of Acts quite a bit. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's actually more than just four. So I guess this is an important point that in the first century, you don't have this monolithic mm. Judaism. So sometimes people will talk about, well, Judaism in the first century. There's, there's no such thing as Judaism in the first century. There are Judaisms or, mm. you know, there are flavors, mm -hmm. denominations, you could even say. Because <laughs> uh, even within the Zealots, there are multiple different... Oh. I almost spilled the tiny cup. <laughs> Again. Oh, man. Like, true story. Driving here this morning, I spilled the tiny cup uh, all over me. Yep. Had yep. to go home and change shirts. True story. And then I say, spilled my cup on me, and Tom gave me the shirt off his back or out of his drawer. Right. We're so <laughs> we're so unified <laughs> that we both spilled coffee. Today, what does that mean that we s soiled ourselves? Your wife said <laughs> it, that it's a sign that we should stop drinking coffee. But that's, I don't that, know if I, I received that interpretation. That, I don't think that's from the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we go to the next uh, clip? Okay. Or did you finish your thought? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just keep going. Keep on moving. Like old times, huh? As he said, no one ever has to guess what's going on in your head. There's nothing in my head. This, it's in our bones. Don't have to think. Must be nice. What? Having nothing in your head. Don't be smart. It's just the same. That leaves true. You plucked the heads of grain at Morikel. Everybody did that. Except 
Mary. She'd already done her part. You think you're never going to make another mistake in your life? She was mm. gone for days. True. Don't exaggerate. Me not to exaggerate? Are you telling me not to exaggerate? That... Wow! Look, she went through something horrible and terrifying, and she dealt with it the best way she knew how. She should have gone to Jesus. She knows that now. If you remember, Jesus was disarming Crazy Simon of his dagger. Oh, he's the Crazy Simon? I'm a married man who worked an honest trade. <laughs> worked an honest trade? Peace, honestly. Here's how I met Jesus. Unexpected roads. Gambling. Brawling. That also unexpected. You gamble too. And I'll never do it again. And if I'm ever tempted, I'll ask the rabbi for help. Mm. Suddenly, I'll do anything selfish. Leaves the group stranded at camp for two days, starving, or puts Jesus on edge. Makes him snap the Pharisees who are hunting us down now. He was grieving John's arrest, and they're not hunting us down. You're so dramatic. <laughs> they are Ooh. definitely brothers. <laughs> Right? For sure. I mean, this is like the raw, unedited, you right. know, oh man. It actually reminds me of that scene with Jesus and John the Baptist. Right. You yeah. know, I mean, they're cousins, but these guys are brothers. But I mean, oh, man. this is, I mean, this is real life. Come yeah. on. We all have families. Right. And we all yeah. uh, get heated and right. passionate because you don't filter with family. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this is unfiltered and raw and genuine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I and, like it. And they're wrestling with temptation. Yeah. They're wrestling with what happens when the trial comes. What happens when the temptation mm-hmm. comes. And, you know, it sounds like Simon's like, you know, it, we're, we're, it's going to be okay. Like, almost like there's there's grace, you know, there for that. And, and Andrew's like, we got to have our stuff in line. Right. And there's right. there's truth to both sides. That's great. That's good. That's good. They're wrestling with grace. I like how you're yeah, saying that. You know, sure. and mercy and mm-hmm. forgiveness. Yeah. And, they don't want hyper, no hyper grace, and, and yeah, right. there's a dance there. And so obviously, you know, Andrew's got some tension going on, right? Mm-hmm. Like we said earlier, it's like John the Baptist is in prison. There's words getting out. He's concerned. Right. He's concerned, and like, I, you don't blame him. No. Like he he he's left everything to right. follow this rabbi. Right. It's like we don't want to screw it up now. Right. Like it's right. just getting it's just getting going. You know? It's good. It's building that that tension yeah. too when they take. They'll take the Shua. Right. So, right. All right, all right, keep going. But reaches Jerusalem, that he claimed the title Son of Man mm. and Lord of the Sabbath, that hunt him down, that put him away, it could completely ruin all the plans for the sun. Erase all the momentum we've gained. That's what I'm afraid of. Jerusalem doesn't even open the mail from Vadikert. Andrew, this is just fear, <laughs> though. I've been at this longer than you. When they decide they don't like you, it's over. John! John might spend his life in prison. But Herod arrested John, not the Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin arrest people all the time! <laughs> well. You're the one who told me he was the Messiah. Hmm. Am I gonna have to be the one to remind you now? Hmm. The very fact that he's the Messiah means there's going to be trouble. You get it? Maybe even a war. If you were building an army, would you start with little James and Thaddeus? Simon, uh, you think he's drawing up military plans all the time? He goes away to desolate places. He never comes back with anything. You know what? Let's just fish. All right, can we? Shoot. It would be so hard. They're trying to figure it out, right? right? I mean, and, messianic expectations, right? right? Like, I mean, how do you figure it out? Whew. It's like hindsight's twenty twenty. Oh, right. I mean, I think a lot of times we look back on the first century and what happened in the Gospels, and we're like, well, of course, you know. It's Why all, couldn't they it's, just get it? Right. right. He's it's, right there the whole time. And right. he was prophesied in Isaiah 53 mm-hmm. and, you know, all these different mm-hmm. messianic prophecies. Of course, he's born in Bethlehem and, you know, all, all this, you know, sort mm-hmm. of a stuff. Yeah. But I, I feel like when, the, when we are on the other side and the Lord has come back. Yeah. We're going to be like, oh, Revelation, it's so clear, you know. Oh, Zechariah, it's obvious, you right, know. I right. mean, Daniel, I know exactly what Daniel was saying. Well, of course, in hindsight, you know. Yeah. So I think sometimes we, uh, I don't know. Well, even We don't even, have enough grace for him. Exactly, right. We don't, we don't projecting 2,000 years yeah. of being able to read and study on the disciples right. is like, that's, 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 a, that's a heavy oak. It's a, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, the, this wrestling, they're wrestling with messianic expectations of right. like the implication. Like, is mm -hmm. there war? Is there peace? Like, right. what what's going to happen? Like, who's who they're going to get in trouble right. by? Whether it's Herod or the Sanhedrin yeah. or Rome, or it's like, man, this is complicated stuff. They're not exactly. They're not seeing the second coming of the Lord in this moment. Right. Like he's right there. Right. Right? But Peter's like, it doesn't seem like he's building an army here. That's a good point, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With little James and and Thaddeus. Mm -hmm. So anyway, let's keep going. A little group. Andrew, my little brother whom I love very much. What? I need you to take a very long deep breath. Can you do that? What? Why? Just please, ask God to give you... Now, a few days would be plenty of time to make sure everything mm. goes smoothly. definitely looked at Yeshua in that moment and he's like don't be afraid tell everyone to keep planning I'll be back wow I knew it hey, I knew it here together man mm. Jesus of Nazareth, you were sought for questioning by a Roman authority. Will you surrender to detainment peacefully? Yes. Jesus, Why? no! Are you armed? I am not, but some of my followers are. Tell your followers to drop their weapons and step back ten cubits. I will. May I say goodbye to my Ima? Mater mea. Yes. Don't be afraid, Emma. James and John, drop your weapons and step back ten cubits. Matthew is safe, I'm doing well. Hmm. He's back at the camp. <laughs> you all look underfed, filthy. We had a bit of a hungry spell, but we have men out on the water now stocking us up. He's used to eating well. What <laughs> do you have to offer him? Hmm. Should we talk about this later? <laughs> Move out! I, I got to be honest, I wasn't expecting that to be as powerful. I don't know, I'm like emotional about mm. that. Yeah, it's uh, I wasn't ever envisioning <clears throat> his mother there. It mm. kind of feels different. Mm. I think he was speaking Latin to the... Uh, Is that Gaius? Yeah. 
it's like, okay. But saying, hey, can I say goodbye to my mother or whatever? But yeah, if she's there, that makes it like way more. Anytime a, whim, a woman is involved, a right. women are involved, and you have the right. Roman soldiers, it's much. But clearly, this is this is extra biblical, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, this this isn't in the text. Sure, uh, doesn't mean it doesn't make this. It could have happened, mm-hmm. right? So we don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's definitely helping us, I think, understand even the emotions involved with yeah. uh, being so close to Yeshua, yeah. and and they. I like how they've juxtaposed it with with uh john the baptist arrest mm-hmm. and so in this punishment of being in jail for you know per- perpetuity or whatever they said it was you know mm-hmm. so you're they're concerned right they right. may never see him again right so yeah I, I think that's i think that's it i think it's the closeness and the the reality that the messiah is here and that all of his followers are helping and you know being a part of this and they don't know what's next. They don't know yeah. what is to come. And you know, Yeshua is this he's this firm, you know, like there's no there's no swaying of confidence in him at all. But it's like, man, everything can change just like that. <laughs> right? And so just that that emotion, I don't know. Right. I'm I'm feeling it. So they did a good job of painting this. Like you said, it's extra biblical, of course, but the the reality of the intensity yeah. is there. Mm-hmm. So yeah. What happened? Mr. Dudan did nothing while he was arrested. He was specific. Detained, not arrested. Those are just words. Have you no experience at Rome? We have to go after them. He agreed to surrender peacefully. No! No! Mm. What if they change their minds? Have you forgotten what they're doing to John? You're terrifying her. I will be fine. Well, I'm going. They're headed north. I'll catch them in Jotapata and petition for this release. Andrew, he didn't ask you to help. He shouldn't have to! Hmm. I don't recognize any of you. Brother, you're not yourself. Maybe I should come with you. I feel responsible. You might be responsible. Andrew, how could you leave? Stop this mm. right now. It isn't anyone's fault. Mary. Please, stay. I'll accompany Andrew. I have lots of experience waiting for my rabbi outside jails. Why wait? <laughs> Let's break him out. Don't wait up. Hmm. Now again, you're just wrestling. Wrestling, right? What are you thinking? Well, I mean, it's... What do you do? I mean, they're either wrestling with, is it... I mean, he wasn't there. Andrew wasn't there, but he's obviously he's on tilt. I mean, yeah, right. he was already pretty upset uh-huh. uh, about so. But this is it. you know you see people have different responses to the Lord. You know, <laughs> like there's just like the I love him and it's sweet and, right. and calm, and then other people have this like mm-hmm. passion and and yeah. So it's just, they're showing you all the different personalities, I think, as well. You know, and Simon the Zealot, of course, he's like, well, break let's him break him out, of course. <laughs> you know, I love that. Right, right. So, I mean, everybody's coming to the Lord from their own past and perspectives and even personality. I mean, you know, even two brothers from the same house, like, mm-hmm. brothers oftentimes are so different. Right. So you're right. seeing that as well. And, uh, yeah, this is, I think this is why the Chosen doing extra biblical things they're trying to bring us in the story yeah. and the human reality and yeah. and it's working i think i think we've and we've said this before but if you can look at the different disciples and you can almost identify at least with pieces right. of different ones it's like right. that response and that emotional reaction mm-hmm. and that background and you know and so you're you're like you said you're getting this human interaction mm-hmm. with this messianic expectation or who is yeshua who is jesus and so it's it's kind of makes you reckon with you know those things and i think that's actually what's been missing for a long time Mm. even within the family of messiah meaning jesus is often portrayed and emphasized in his divinity Mm -hmm. and the the fact that he's he's god and 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 everything but this the human part of jesus 
it is the part that hasn't been emphasized as much, I would argue, mm -hmm. throughout the centuries, mm -hmm. because that's actually the Jewish part of Jesus. Mm. And so the humanity of it's Jesus really that is actually his Jewishness. Mm. This is why people are loving the show, mm -hmm. and even people are interested in what we're adding to the shows. And why? It's because it's the right. Jewish Jesus, right. that he was a Jewish man mm -hmm. living in the first century. Yep. And so it's like, whoa, I feel like I've known Jesus my whole sure. life, and yet I haven't known this human part of him. Right. And so that's why I like what they're doing, because they're actually showing you Hey, this is what Jewish family was like in right. the first century. Mm -hmm. This is what Jewish culture, context. Mm -hmm. And look, you to know someone mm -hmm. is to know their family, yep. is to know the context and the culture, yes. the ethnicity, wh whoever they are. Are you you do you really know them, right? I'm not saying that people don't know Jesus who right. didn't know all this, but that we want to know him more. Exactly. We want to know And the opportunity is there. Right. Yeah. I'm really glad because I'm I get a little concerned about the extra biblical nature sometimes. You know, I'm like, I'm not how I'm not quite sure how to reckon. But where we went there, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like yeah. the context, and even if it's extra biblical, mm -hmm. it helps you get the emotion. You know, mm -hmm. so and and why this can be as intense as it is is because you get to know his Jewish side a little bit more, right? Because without the Jewish context, you don't understand why the Roman oppression is as important as it is. You don't understand why the Sanhedrin and, and the Pharisees are as important mm -hmm. as they are, and the zealots and the different sects, and, and even the disciples' backgrounds. It's like you don't get that full, right. intense context right. without that understanding. And so like right. you said, the availability of knowing who Yeshua is is there, and and they're just doing a good job of painting the picture. <laughs> and once you do that, it's like anytime you jump into that, you realize how complex things are. <laughs> right. Exactly. And then you don't just kind of wash over it with a quick paintbrush. Mm -hmm. or like, oh, these were what the Jewish people were like in the first century or in the Bible. Well, that's like saying this is what the church is like today. Right. This is what Christians are like today. Well, which ones are you talking about? <laughs> right. Which which Jewish people are we talking mm -hmm. about? So mm -hmm. they're, they're humans. Right. And they're complex and different and whatever. So. Yeah, that's good. It's good stuff. Let's keep going. So before we go to the next clip, we just want to say thank you so much for those who have recently partnered with us financially. Thank you guys so much and all those who are praying for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we really love your support and can't do it without you guys. So thank you guys so much. Yeah, and if you want to help us continue making Messianic videos about The Chosen or any other teaching videos that we do, please consider partnering with us. You can click on the link in our description below to donate to Grafted and Remember Jerusalem. And another way you can help us is by subscribing and commenting. I'm not sure what could be clearer than the three words, I will be back. That's four. How can you dispute that? <laughs> Maybe it was a hint that we are supposed to be the fulfillment of those words. Zealots and your secret handshakes and codes. I am not a zealot anymore. Just zealous. Mm. There's a diff you just interpreted mm. plain speech about trust and peacefulness as code for insurrection. I think he's onto something. Rabbi told us how important this sermon is. We can't let anything stop it. Maybe it was a hint. You're not going to keep me from another obvious fight, are you? With these skills, we could do it. James and John, be mindful of what he named you. Seems perfect for a time like this. <laughs> I think we should do what he said and wait here for him. Oh yes, great advice coming from someone who disappeared for two days. How dare you? Don't talk to her like that. Oh. Now he speaks. Suddenly he has a voice. When it's about mm. her... You've made mistakes too. Boys! Stop it! Boys? Mm. You're acting like children. Is that mm. right? The words were plain. You weren't there. So now it's a matter of whose testimony is more credible? Now look. Wow. <laughs> There's so much going on here. If this doesn't sound like the family of Messiah today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? Right. It's like, read the comments. I mean, you know, I mean, it's like, it's, wow. Woo. I mean, this, this, Yeshua goes away for five minutes. Mm -hmm. And it's as if he was never with us. Wow. Right? Wow. I mean, I mean, I get it. If. You know, if they came and took you, I would I would not be happy about that. For sure. And if you're like, it's fine. I'm okay. You know, I I don't know that I would agree. You know, and maybe you were saying, a f like, don't worry about me. It's uh -huh. fine, uh -huh. you know? Right. But but now, what are they doing? They're like going after each other's character. Mm -hmm. Like, all those little things come out when you're, when you're angry. And it's like, 
this is not the unity of the family. And they're, they're wrestling over interpretation at this point of three or four words, depending on you count. Uh. <laughs> right? <laughs> it could have been a contraction right. in Hebrew <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> Which it was lost in translation. Right, right. right. But uh, but I I love I love what you're saying too. And they're arguing about how to interpret four words. Right. I will be back. Wow. I, honestly, we've been arguing about similar things for two thousand years. Exactly. So, so we're totally different. <laughs> we're totally different. But I I like what you're saying too. Like someone takes someone that is very dear to you. There's going to be different reactions to that. We have to get that person out. I mean, it, they, they wrestled with this in the book of Acts, too. It right. was like, what are we going to do? Peter's in chains. Peter's in prison. Like, we okay, well, we'll pray all night. I don't know. You know, there's there's different right. responses for sure. And this is this is the Messiah. Wow. You upset our rabbi's email. I only made an observation. I made a mistake leaving camp. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I relied on my own observation my own understanding so heavily. Jesus said he will be back. Good point. Yep. That's a good point. It's a good point for today. He said he'll be back. The truth is in there, mm -hmm. right? With all, with all of his words. Mm -hmm. So then you can feel that when you're like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. he's going to be back. Mm -hmm. So that means that it kind of reminds me of the story uh, with um, the blessing that Jacob in, that gets from Isaac, mm -hmm. you know, and it's this wrestle of forcing the yeah. blessing and tricking his mm -hmm. father, right. right? Or would God be able to somehow make a way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And Rebecca knew that, that right. Jacob was the chosen son, mm -hmm. but... Did she need to force it? Well, they end up deceiving right. Isaac, right? Mm -hmm. So do they need to go and rescue and break him out? Mm -hmm. Or is God going to be able to make a way because he said he would? Remember, he promised and told mm -hmm. Rebecca yep. that yeah. he was the promised son. So yeah, it's a, it's always this thing where do we need to help, Lord? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> And the answer is yes, we do. Right. But in a way that he wants us to do it, right? It's not that yeah. we don't partner with the Lord and we just say, okay, you, your will be done. Right. And, it's, not a, uh, it's, an, it's not an excuse for inaction. Exactly. But it's also not an excuse for anything you want to do. Right. <laughs> so it's really like, okay, Lord. Right. Now we pray and what uh -huh. do you want us to do? Yeah. Uh, now, granted, this is brand new. Sure. I mean, so I'm... This is really interesting, though. We're able to pause and think about it, you know. Literally. Literally. We, there's we, a button. We paused. <laughs> Selah. Selah. We should just say Selah from now on. Oh, yeah. This guy. <laughs> Did he resist? No. Dominus. And his followers? Dominus. Peaceful. And compliant. Have a seat. Leave us. Jesus of Nazareth. We finally meet. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I thought you'd be sort of taller, crazier looking. <laughs> Hair and animal skins. Glad I could disappoint you. The first story I ever heard about him. I didn't believe it. That's usually how it goes. It wasn't about religion or preaching or God. It was about fish. Ah, another common theme. It was an impossibly huge catch, Atticus. It settled the largest debt in Capernaum's ledger. Uh, did you meet Atticus? He's Cohorte's urban name. They're like Caesar's personal detectives, mostly in Rome, but uh, they go wherever. He's especially interested in you. Have you ever visited the Far East, Jesus? I have received visitors from there, but um, <laughs> never been there myself. <laughs> they eat their fish raw. 
<laughs> they eat their fish, but he's talking about sushi. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Isn't that funny? That's funny. I've received visitors from there. Mm. Oh my gosh. Wise men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Three, right? What? <laughs> Three gifts. Okay. Three okay. gifts. Okay. <laughs> we don't know technically how many wise men. Is that what you're referring to? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Peel off the scales, cut off the heads and tails, and take a bite. It's quite something. They eat the flesh and spit out the bones. Of course. If Simon had not settled his debt, that could have resulted in my demotion. That was flesh. You create a public disruption that results in damage to property, a stampede, and a blight on my personal reputation. Mm. Mm. Bones. You seduced the single most brilliant and effective tax collector in the entire Upper Galilee. Also, bones. And now, the most tenured cohortis urbani in the history of the Roman Empire tells me he personally witnessed you disarm a zealot Sicarii. Wow. That's flesh. That's flesh. <laughs> Who is this Sorry guy? to have caused so much confusion for you over a flesh and bone. Confusion? <laughs> wow. No. No. If your race weren't so repugnant and odious, I'd offer you a job. I cannot take that as a compliment. Mm. Jesus, this whole thing wow. is very simple. You seem to be splitting your time between creating headaches for Rome and victories we could not achieve ourselves. That's a little reductive. You've doubled your following since leaving Capernaum. Then again, you returned a violent man who had been terrorizing Jericho to his senses. But word of your miracles, or whatever, has spread all through Syria. And they start coming over here. Do you see my problem? I don't know whether to eat you or spit you out. To stick to the fish metaphor. But we're probably past that. <laughs> this His character is just crazy. <laughs> it's it's interesting how they're, they're presenting even Rome's kind of wrestle with what mm. to do with him. Mm-hmm. And they're even suggesting, it seems to me, like... Uh, why Rome didn't do something with him earlier. Right. Because he was also helping at times, mm-hmm. you know, unintentionally. Right, or right. That's reductive reasoning you were saying. But mm-hmm. I think that that's an interesting way to think about <laughs> they weren't seeing him as a threat you know, right. or they would have done something uh, because he's yeah bringing shalom and reformation, if you will, to some of the zealots. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, it's really interesting. You you, you have to, I don't know the, the way they portrayed. You know, the Romans are definitely viewing the Jewish people as less than nothing, right? And Jesus is not really okay with that, right? right? So it's it's good to see that. It's good to see him, you know, identifying with his people. Like I can't take that as a compliment, you know? right? Like, like like it's there, you know. Yeah. They're they're portraying this. Pretty well, even even in this semi lighthearted but very serious scene. So, yeah. which this this character has this like almost like bipolar nature. <laughs> it kind of seems like he's up and down like crazy. So, yeah, they're under Roman occupation for sure. So for it's, sure, it's bad news. Now, I'm saying I don't know what to make of you. That's going to be a lot of people's problem with me. Hmm. No more bones, Jesus. Follow me. No more draining my talent pool, creating spectacles, crowds. No more meddling. Hmm? I cannot promise any of these things. And I cannot promise you won't stop breathing. Well, it sounds like we're clear on what we can and cannot promise. Jesus of Nazareth, I like you. We're on the same team. Just don't make me kill you. Wow. I won't make you do anything. (laughs) But my father, on the other hand. Whoa. I don't know what that means, but let's leave on a high note. (laughs) I think we have an understanding here. (laughs) Free to go. What? That was hilarious. (laughs) Let's leave on a high note. 
Oh, man. Oh, sorry about your cousin, by the way. Hmm. Marching himself into Herod's court and moralizing was not a very wise or brave thing to do. He knew what he was getting himself into. Do you know what you're getting yourself into? It was a privilege to speak with you today, Quintus. Wow. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. So nothing about him concerns you, huh? If it did, I wouldn't have let him go. It'd be a nice diversion for the people for a while. <laughs> hmm. Hey, that, that guy's eating again. <laughs> yeah. I just want to point that out. <laughs> In antiquity, people didn't uh, hate each other based on the color of their skin. Mm. They hated each other based on their ethnicity, meaning their religion, what country they came from, mm -hmm. or whatever. So, I mean, clearly here the Jewish people are less than right. to the Romans. For sure. But it has to do with status. It has to do with even citizenship, mm. right? We know yeah. Paul ends up having mm -hmm. Roman citizenship, right? And so he has a higher status. So it's all, it's not based on what you look like per se, but they would definitely look at you less based on your, your status. You know, slave, obviously, uh, but slave didn't, you could be any color. You could be any yeah. ethnicity. You could be any mm -hmm. uh, religion in that sense. So this is the, who's in power? Who's the mm -hmm. dominating mm -hmm. uh, empire, which obviously is Rome. Right. Uh, but even in Rome, actually this is a good point about Roman soldiers. So the 10th Roman legion, which is the Roman legion that ends up destroying Jerusalem in 70 AD, hmm. was made up of mainly Arabs, Syrians, and I can't remember the third, but basically different people from the Middle East. Hmm. Okay, so they're not all Italians, is hmm. what I mean. Mm -hmm. So the Roman Empire, I mean, Italy's not such a big sure. area. When they would, they conquered the yeah. big chunk of the known world, they what? They just got other nations to then be a part of right. the Roman army. Mm -hmm. So you end up having people from all different areas. And of course, the Middle Eastern right. Roman troops and legions, they did better when they actually knew the lay of the land. Sure. And they knew how to go into the desert mm -hmm. and they knew how to travel. Uh, so they would have probably been even a little more diverse uh, than mm. just looking like Europeans, essentially. Right, right. That's an interesting um, point, though. Yeah. Mm. But probably the head guys were more the Italians, mm. and, you know, that would make sense. Sent in by Rome right. to kind of help govern. Gotcha. The comment about his father was really interesting, because mm -hmm. he was saying, I wouldn't make you do anything. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what he exactly meant by my, by mm. my father. Did he say would? I think so. I think he said my father would, or I yeah. don't know. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Let's leave on a high note. Right. <laughs> like, what? Like, he's in a, oh, it's back to your villain comment. Uh huh. He, yeah. he is a really good villain. He is. Character. He is. And yeah. You yeah. need a good villain. You do. It, it, you see this, like, this, like, power, like, authority. Yeah. Like we were talking about earlier, but this guy, our Dominus. He's very full of himself. Like it, it. One of his major problems is that if something defames his name, right? It like it makes him look bad, right? And so that was like I was high on his priority list. Is is his name, right? But Yeshua is all about his father's name, mm -hmm. right? And so there's this like evil opposite authority, and then there's Yeshua who is this the servant, you know, the suffering servant, but has all authority right and so i don't know there's this this there's this struggle going on but yeshua's obviously not really worried about it <laughs> he's not concerned about reputation management right 
That's right. for sure. That's what sets him apart from all of us in that yeah. sense. Like, uh, it, it reminds so when he said, but my father would, it reminds me of how Paul put it, that at the name of Yeshua, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess mm -hmm. that he is the Lord. All right, last one. Mm -hmm. Which is what he said, right? Right? Teacher, are you hurt? What happened? Well, I suppose I should not be surprised that you would spot me. <gasps> oh, Baba, are you safe? They won't follow you? Yes, I'm safe. And they just wanted to talk. I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'm glad, Matthew. Just talk? Quintus wanted to talk, yes. But the Romans, they don't find me much of a threat, which is fine. Hopefully that'll change soon. So, what were you doing out here? Praying, John. Remember, there is a big event to prepare for. Rabbi, with all due respect, you couldn't have told us that you were back first? You were grabbed by Roman soldiers with weapons. We were all worried sick. Did I not tell you that I would be back? And to keep planning? Man. <laughs> We're all going to have to learn how to do this, regardless. You did say that. <laughs> I like that silence. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. But I'm remembering that they were wrestling with the fact that he said, I will be back. Mm -hmm. But he also said, keep planning. Mm -mm. Right? And mm -hmm. so there's this there's this part that was missed, you know? Right. Like, it, the, the keep planning part was lost mm -hmm. because he was gone. Right? right? <laughs> so there's like application was missed because of emotion because of you know it, mm -hmm. it's crazy yeah so i don't know it was missed missed words so right? a good modern application would be read your bible yeah and keep reading for context <laughs> right, right? <laughs> like read your bible mm -hmm. like we have the words of mm -hmm. jesus so read your bible right yeah i don't know where he's gonna go next here but even just the way yeshua teaches about our waiting for him they are up their lamps are lit, they mm -hmm. have torches lit, and mm -hmm. they're waiting in the night. That's good. Right? And so the, this, even the parable of the ten virgins, I think it is, it's like, you know, five and five. Five were wanting oil and five stored their oil, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, even, it's just, a, to me, it was a picture mm -hmm. of the waiting. It's good. Right? The lamps were lit, the oil was ready, the, the, you know, the fire. Active waiting. And Simon the Zealot was watching and waiting, you mm -hmm. know, and so, I don't know, it was a, this active waiting. It's, it's just, I, it just... It just looked that way to mm -hmm. me, and that's where my mind and my heart went. So it's good. I don't I have no idea if he's going to say anything about that, but <laughs> you know, of what's happening, good or bad, things are only going to get more difficult. You can't just shut down when you're fearful. Hmm. And what are you going to do when I'm no longer here? Yes, we are still figuring this out. Yes, but we can do better. We we will do better, Rabbi. Philip said the baptizer gave his followers a prayer in addition to the daily traditional prayers. Perhaps you could mm. do the same. Mm. Yes, I'd like to learn more about what you're saying when you're out alone. Mm. Now, now you're behaving like true students. Mm. This is what I like to see. And prayer is the first step in getting the mind and the heart right. It's why you see me go to it so often. So teach us to pray like you do. Mm -hmm. Please. Please. Mm. When we pray, we want to be sure to first start with acknowledging our Father in heaven mm -hmm. and his greatness. So you can say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And we always want to be sure to do God's will and not our own. <laughs> so we say, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, I just wanted to hear him say the whole thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. I mean, I don't even know what to say, really. Mm -hmm. It's the Lord's Prayer. I mean, it's... Right. 
I love how they set it up though in this like teach us please you know like yeah. what what can we do to to pray like you yeah you know I think in the midst of fear in the midst of trial in the midst of difficult situations like they were portraying here that's where the teaching moment came in right that's where the you know the rabbi was able to teach his disciples yeah. right like in these moments okay, stay focused mm -hmm. and then they're like okay well teach us how to stay focused right. <laughs> and he's like prayer 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 yeah. we got to learn how to pray and then like you said this desperate okay well then teach us how to pray please mm -hmm. and that's yeah. that's that we have that tool we're sinning we mess up but then he will he he will he's available he wants to encounter us yeah in those moments and then you're like oh i never want to do that again right oh lord you know it's like a uh, a yeah. teaching moment like right. you're saying like pray this way and so now next time when they're fearful oh, yeah. then they're like well he taught us to pray mm -hmm. this way let's we'll pray that way you right know? it's so. it's a good thing that we have it written down because we can go back and read it right. and remember it because how easily we forget you know and, and that's that is the, that is a beautiful application and we all have those moments we all have those times of fear or trial or whatever it is but the availability of his presence is there so read your bible so read your bibles <laughs> that's the moral of today's story i think so yeah, read your bible yeah it's probably the moral of every story right? <laughs> <laughs> it's well, almost see, impressive it doesn't matter the size of your mug <laughs> you can still spill where's your mug we have it we have oh. it on on what i don't like mm. <laughs> <laughs> am i welcoming you are. You're so welcoming. <laughs> <laughs>